Okay, so Lev, great to have you, my brother, back on the show. You've had a big couple of weeks, you know, my friend. Uh, some real, real tough ones over the last couple of weeks. So we obviously have a lot to talk about, and I just want to jump right into it. So last week, you were a witness in the House Oversight investigation into the Bidens. How did you become a witness in this specific uh, Oversight Committee hearing? Who called you and why? Well, originally, uh, if you remember, Michael, after my arrest, I supplied uh, the first impeachment committee against Donald Trump with all the evidence uh, that would pertain to Ukraine. Uh, then uh, fast forwarded to this impeachment, uh, the Republicans and the committee are using the same uh, propaganda information that I was sent to get. And most of it is the information that I handed to them and then they're push pushing it till this day. Uh, when I realized that, I wrote a letter to Congress, to James Comer, to basically telling him that this is a wild goose chase and here's why. And I debunked all of those theories and I told them I'm willing to testify under oath and bring the receipt. Uh, at that point, uh, the Republicans, <laughs> along with Comer and, and Jordan, decided to vote against it. Even when Jamie Raskin came up and wanted to subpoena me and Rudy, they decided not to. So uh, after proceeding, I guess the Republicans continued to proceed with the investigate with this impeachment sham. Uh, eventually, uh, the Democrat uh, uh, House impeachment uh, uh, lawyers got in touch with me and started interviewing me and asking me all sorts of different questions. After they finished with the interview and asked me to produce the facts, after I did all of that, they asked me would I be willing to testify if I was called. I said absolutely. And then I got the call three days prior to uh, that day, Wednesday, March 19th, uh, to come in to testify. And I showed up. Interesting. So who was it that actually called you? It was off of your, your document to Comer Pyle, who we all know. I mean, boy, did he make a fucking ass out of himself during this investigation. By the way, they all do. They are so unprepared. And you know why they're unprepared? They're unprepared because they don't have the facts. What they're trying Correct. to do, as Kellyanne Conway used to call it, they're trying to live with alternative facts. And when you come, when you come with the goods, there is absolutely no way for them to rebut anything that you say because a fact is a fact, especially if the evidence proves that what you're saying is true. I mean, you know better than anybody, Michael. Me and you both have been going through the same thing. People try and call us liars. And we say, you know, it's not about what we did in the past. We're giving you facts, paperwork, proof, text messages, contracts, emails, phone to show you to back up what we're saying. To, so so it's, don't believe us. Believe the facts. And it's just incredible how they try. But again, Michael, you know better than anybody. These guys are doing it for a purpose. You know, we could sit here and say they're, you know, something's wrong with them. Why did they have an agenda? They're pushing Russian propaganda simply for the fact to get Trump elected because there's nobody in this world that wants to get Trump elected more than Vladimir Putin. So basically, they've joined up with the evil side to basically get Trump elected. And that's what's happening. And they don't they know the truth. They all know the truth. They know the facts. They know what's going on, but they don't care. They just need to lie to the American public to try to get him in office. And that's the, the scary. But, but Liv, it's not just Vladimir Putin. It's every autocrat crazy, crazy man that's out there, Xi Jinping. Do you really think that Xi Jinping doesn't want to see Donald Trump over Joe Biden <laughs> as the president? Oh, you, yes, Vladimir Putin being the KGB guy that he is already has a psychological analysis and a profile on the orange man. But they want him. Do you think um, uh, Orban doesn't want Donald Trump? No, Do you think that even <laughs> Mohammed bin Salman doesn't want oh, Donald absolutely. Trump? Of course he does. Why? Because one absolutely. of the things that I can tell you for, for certain, Saudi, especially Mohammed bin Salman, and rightfully so, by the way, is petrified of Iran. Petrified that oh, Iran's going to come absolutely. in, they're going to they're going to destroy their oil fields, and they're going to hang each and every one of them by their necks because the Iranians hate the Saudis, they hate Mohammed yep. bin Salman, and so on. They they are anxious to get their hands on what's considered U.S. Israeli technology, and that's of course the Iron Dome. They want that technology now. 
imagine hypothetically, because not more than 20 minutes before we decided to do this recording for this podcast, the big announcement just came out, right? That Donald doesn't have to put up the 460 right. or 500 million dollars yeah. for the bond. It's now a buck 75 that he has to float. And, and they gave him 10 days, this 10 days. fucking court of appeals. Then on top of that, Judge Mershon turned around and did what I just started to applaud, which is he pointed the finger at the Southern District of New York, and I have been very critical and <laughs> very accurate in saying they don't believe that they work within a system. They believe themselves to be sovereign, that they are the yep. sovereign district of New York. Yep. They don't have to answer to anyone. One plus year ago, Alvin Bragg, and by the way, I'm not a, I'm not a massive Alvin Bragg fan at all, right? And so right. In, let, let me go one step further. I've never met the guy. Could you imagine? <laughs> I've been in 30 times to the, Southern, to the Manhattan DA. I've and never this- met him once. The last time that I was there, I was standing in the hall waiting for security to walk me out, and he came out of his office uh, and then closed the door. So I basically saw him in person for the first time. (laughs) Not a hello, not a nothing, not a, hey, Michael, thank you for all that you're doing. Here's a handshake. Nothing. Zero. So I'm not a massive Alvin Bragg fan. But over a year ago, he made the request to the Southern District. And they basically tell everybody the same. So I don't feel so bad anymore. Fuck you. We'll give you whatever we want or we're not going to give you whatever we want because there is no oversight by main justice. Hello, Merrick Garland. Wake the fuck up. Get your get your shit in order once and for all so that when you put in FOIA requests, you know, and when you, you know, when you're asked for documents, especially if you are another prosecutorial agency and that's, and that's the crazy part michael they did the same thing with me during the impeachment of trump yes the impeachment committee asked southern district for my evidence and what did they do they went to the judge and said seal it we're not giving it to them i had to go fight in court to get my documents released to the to the impeachment committee i mean these are two agencies they're supposed to be working together let, i mean it's mind-boggling let, let me go one step further the agencies that you're asking about when the house oversight that's Congress. I don't understand as well these members of Congress. In my case, since we're going to go, we'll go tit for tat on this yeah. one. In my <laughs> case, it was the, the documents and investigations were requested by multiple members of Congress, Hakeem Jeffries, Ted Lieu, and I applaud them both. I'm angry at them that they haven't been able to get it, that they're not more forceful like you and I. Like, I would walk into the foyer office, and I would grab the first guy that's sitting at the desk, and I would choke him until he went ahead, grabbed the fucking thumb drive, and put into, you know, put on the thumb drive all my 486,000 documents. I'm a member of Congress, motherfucker. If I'm asking you because I need something nope. for a committee hearing, I need it for a committee hearing. None of this shit. Dan Goldman brought it up. So did um, Jamie Raskin. So did Congressman Steve Cohen. So did Senator Dick Durbin. I mean, how many more people have to ask in order to get a, to get documents that belong to the people? It doesn't belong to the Southern District of New York. It doesn't belong to DOJ. It belongs to the people. And 100%. If, and if Congress needed your documents in order to have a valid hearing and not to waste the American people's time and our tax dollars, give the documents. I mean, like, you, what are you hiding? Exactly. I mean, look, Michael, the only way this uh, we could move forward is if hopefully after these elections and the Democrats take uh, the House, that they will hold these hearings and they will hold Bill Barr, Scott Brady, people in the DOJ, people in the FBI accountable for how the, for what they did, how they persecuted people like yourself or myself, how they hid evidence, how they buried the facts, and how would they allow to impeach a U.S. president with Russian disinformation knowingly? <laughs> knowingly. That's the crazy part. They know it, and they're still doing it till this day. It's yeah. insane. So, you know, what? you brought up something that I was going to bring up, that you and I have that thing in common where... People are constantly attacking us based upon our credibility, right? Especially the Trump team. 
in your specific case, it may not be Trump's exact team, but it's certainly the Rudy team. It's the Bill Barr team. Anything that they could do to try to impeach your credibility. But the mistake that these people have, and as I'm watching television today, because of, again, you know, now the trial in the hush money case uh, is going to start April 15th. Oh, you get like on CNN, uh, you get these fucking genius pundits. Well, you know, Michael Cohen's not really a credible. He's not the ideal right. witness and so on. <laughs> really? Seriously, yes. really? How about that entire case only exists because of me? How about the fact that the Tish James case came out of my appearance at the House Oversight Committee and a bunch of yes. other cases that have been started? Really? What about what about my credit? The only ones that attack my credibility to this day is the Southern District of New York. The same group of fucking dirtbags that today Judge Mershon pointed the finger at and said, this is your fault. Not Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg's, not Michael Cohen's fault, that's for sure, right? Not even Donald Trump's attorneys. <laughs> even though that they did the very late filing right. for this reason to delay, but they hold the Southern District of New York accountable. Yeah. What do we do? I keep I keep yeah. coming with the documents. I keep coming with the goods, just like you. And, yeah. yeah, and and you know what? None of them defute the documents. None of them defute what you bring the facts. None of them defute my facts. What they all they said to us, he's a liar. And the only reason they could say that you or I are a liar is because of the Southern District charged up bullshit charges on both of us to make us look like liars. And it was done for the simplest fact to discredit us. And that's all they're using. But what are we lying about? We're showing facts. We're bringing the proof. And they are still, I mean, listen, I mean. Uh, this is the problem when you have a corrupt president who weaponizes yep. the Justice Department through a willing and complicit, bloviated attorney general. I mean, the fact that so far, because Republicans will not put Bill Barr in front of a committee, force him to right? show up, right. I would nothing <laughs> would make me happier. But if we're yeah. successful, if we're successful in November and we take the House back, I promise you, Bill Barr will be before a multitude of committees. Oh, I, you know? I look forward to that. So, I do, look forward to testifying in those committees. You, you and me both. Now, can, yeah, can exactly. we go back to your testimony before the House Oversight yeah. Committee? Because I'm going to assume for a quick second that not everyone saw your testimony. Would you do me a favor? Would you mind telling my audience what you told the committee, particularly about Rudy Colludi, drunken Giuliani, and Donald Trump, and Bill Barr, and Pete Sessions, and Comer. I mean, listen, the bottom line is uh, it started off from the very beginning, and I came there to tell the truth. The first truth is that the American people have been lied to by Donald Trump, Rudy Giuliani, and massive people in Congress and the media, and they're being lied to continuously to this day. This is a sham impeachment. Uh, I was the one that was tasked to be on the ground to do to find all this dirt on uh, Joe Biden and Hunter Biden. I've dealt with every single individual out there, and I brought the facts to, to this committee to show them so they could dispute on things that they say, you know, I'm lying or this is not true or this didn't happen. But they didn't go into any of those uh, facts because, like I said, they have them. Now, the story is basically simple. Rudy Giuliani, one day, uh, and it was a day in November, Towards the end of November, we were sitting in the Grand Havana room where Rudy got a call from Bart Schwartz, who was one of his investigators, and started telling him all this stuff about Ukraine. Now, Rudy already was into Ukraine at the time, and my experience already with the Trump and Ukraine was we had that private dinner where I had told him about my opinions about the ambassador and where he flipped out and said, get rid of her fire. But what people don't know is the following day, literally the following day, I had a meeting with Congressman Pete Sessions in his office. He didn't know me more than two, three hours at the time. When he heard that I sp uh, had a dinner with Donald Trump and I told him that we were talking about Ukraine, he immediately stopped, wrote a letter, and handed it, sealed it, signed it, and asked me personally to deliver it to the U President Donald Trump to bypass Secretary, St Secretary of State Pompeo. So that's the first wacky shit. I mean, I could have been a spy. I could have been, I could have been anybody. I mean, he just handed me a letter and I tweeted it out today the picture of actually where I handed the letter to Donald Trump and he puts it in his in his uh, coat pocket. So it was already getting wacky from the beginning, but still this, I was still a donor. I still just was, you know, doing my business, my shit, trying to get by. 
But after that November meeting, Rudy got off the phone and started telling me and, and Igor everything, like he usually does after he spoke to Trump or anybody else. Or a few drinks. So, or a few, exactly. I mean, which was always typical. <laughs> but at this time, he got amazed because when me and Igor started responding, because we knew a lot of the same conspiracy theories because of Igor's contacts in Ukraine, Igor whipped out his phone and we showed Rudy the video of Joe Biden saying, get rid of the prosecutor or I won't give you a billion. At that moment, Michael, you should have seen his face. He lit up. He stood up like, you know, like this says, we got you. We got you, Joe, or we got him, something to that effect. Literally two weeks later, we're at the White House. Now it's Hanukkah party. We were invited as donors to go to the Hanukkah party. We're having uh, lunch uh, with Rudy uh, in the Trump Hotel where Rudy turns around and says, uh, I'm going to go with you to the party and we're going to go earlier. We're going to go meet up with Trump at the residence and we're going to fill him in on everything Ukraine and tell him how you're going to go get Victor Shokin and bring him here. And that will seal Biden's faith. That was the plan. We went to the White House. Uh, Rudy, uh, uh, the only change was Rudy went by himself to the residence. Uh, and then we met up afterwards. We were escorted to the Red Room where we eventually met up with Trump. And Trump basically came up to me, told me that Rudy says great things about you. Keep up the good work. And you know how he talks in code language. Mm -hmm. He didn't have to come out and say, you know, great, go get Victor Shokin and bring him here. And he basically patted me on the back, told me great stuff after he got out of the conversation with Rudy. So it was understandable. Two weeks later, Michael, I was in Ukraine. I was in the middle of Ukraine looking for Viktor Shokin. I found Viktor Shokin, and that's where it all began. And that's where the truth I wanted to come out, because from day one that I found Viktor Shokin, the man that at the controversy of this thing, he never, ever said that Joe Biden or Hunter Biden did anything criminal. His only statement was that he feels that if he was allowed to continue prosecuting Burisma, and he had, he had the opportunity to question Hunter Biden, he would have cracked and found illegality in what they were doing. That's how crazy this is. And he told that to Rudy right off the bat. But that wasn't enough for Rudy. <laughs> right, but, but who was the other guy that was there uh, that that claims uh, Bobolinsky, right? I oh, mean, yeah. what's, what's this guy's deal? I mean, you know, but th there's something mentally wrong with him. No, no, I, I'm serious. You know, look, because fine, you know, you just basically gave my audience the entire lowdown on the the weaponization or the attempted weaponization of R Ukraine's right Justice Department by for Donald to get a benefit out of because again, you know this as well as my audience does, which is there always has to be a benefit for Donald. But this guy, Tony Bobolinsky, yeah. right? The, I, I don't understand this guy. He's sitting there and he is actually fucking lying before Congress. He's lying. He knows what right. he's saying is contradictory to basically everything that you say or contradictory to all of the documentary evidence that validates he, what you're saying. He even contradicted his own statements he said to them prior. To right. Dan Goldman was like, here we are, here's your statement. And he's like, nope, I never said that. So what's the deal with him? I mean, and, and this and this is what I'm, I'm glad you pointed out, because prior to this, Michael, you said something very interesting. When me and you go on CNN or any of these television, yes, they give us a platform to try to tell the truth, but they also always put it in people's head that we're liars, that we were convicted. We're... When Tony Babalunsky goes on Fox News, he's a star. He's the star witness. People yep. are looking at him like he's credible. So that's another thing. The media, you know, how they portray you. I mean, I think it's enough of the media portraying me and you are liars, and instead they should portray us as people that are out there telling the truth. Elevate every morning with Tommy John's second skin underwear. You see, what you put in your pants can make or break your day. And the luxurious support of Second Skin guarantees everything will go smoothly. When you wear Tommy John, you're much more comfortable so you can do everything better. Tommy John's stylish and soft Second Skin underwear has dozens of comfort innovations like like a supportive contour pouch and breathable, lightweight, moisture-wicking fabric with four times the stretch of competing brands. With over 20 million pairs sold and thousands of five-star reviews, guys everywhere love their Tommy John. 
You see, that's why Tommy John doesn't have customers. They have fanatics. Like this one who raves the most comfortable box of briefs ever. There's no downside. Buy one pair and you'll never want to wear any other underwear again. See, I've been trying different brands of trunks for the past few months while wearing a similar product for the past three years. Second Skin is by far the most comfortable I've ever worn, hands down. I mean, let me be clear. Let me tell you why I love my Second Skin underwear. Because they keep you guys from banging into your thighs. And trust me, they are soft. They feel great. And that's why I love Tommy John. And you should get Tommy John too. Plus, plus, your most valuable assets are always covered with Tommy John's best pair you'll ever wear or its free guarantee. So go right now and get 25% off site-wide right now at TommyJohn.com slash Cohen. Save 25% for a limited time at TommyJohn.com slash Cohen. That's TommyJohn.com slash Cohen. See site for details. Because we've shown enough facts to prove it because you and I both know they wouldn't televise us if they knew we were lying. They wouldn't televise us if we, we didn't have the facts. The reason they put us on their show is because they know we're telling the truth and, 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 and we have the facts. So I think they need to stop opening up with their segments by saying, you know, convicted liars or the, the way they do it. You know what I'm saying? It's, to un, you? it's <laughs> unbelievable. It's, you know, they it's started, unbelievable. They, right. They started off, uh, you know, Michael Cohen, former personal attorney and fixer to, you know, former President yeah. Trump and, you know, convicted felon 860-67054. Yeah. I mean, you know. <laughs> What kind, of, <laughs> hey, what kind of fucking horse shit is this, right? The only right. reason that Donald Trump is being held accountable right now, thanks to Tish James and thanks to exactly. Alvin Bragg. And by the way, that's only two out of the obvious, you know, four cases. Michael, but the biggest cases. problem is, the biggest uh, kind of, uh, injustice is that it shouldn't have even been Alvin Bragg. It no. shouldn't have been Tish. It should have been the Southern District when they indicted you and he was co-conspirator one, unindicted co-conspirator one. Yep. They let him get He should have been part of that. And you know, that's but, the problem. That's but, why. But since we're talking about Bo Belinsky, and again, what they need to do is, I really believe this, and we're so divided right now, Lev, as a country. We're so yep. divided that... So, even members of Congress, depending upon which side of the aisle you sit, they don't give a shit about America's future. They don't care about getting to the truth. It's all about, it's all about their position and ensuring that they continue to show fealty to Donald and lie. But it's not just Tony Bobolinsky who is doing it. Then there's the other guy too. What's his name? Alexander Smirnov. What's the deal with this guy as well? I mean, listen, Smirnov is, I don't know him personally, but just reading his indictment, I have a pretty good idea who he is and and and, and because I know a lot of people that he's been associated with. And I'll tell you, I mean, this was a guy that was doing business, got caught by the FBI. They started paying him to be their informant. But he then started using them to do try to make more money for himself out in that world over there until eventually he got caught up with some big individuals in the Russian world and got mixed up where they gave, told him that this is what the message we need to give. And it's very easy. You got to understand when they say the message. Remember one thing, Michael, your audience needs to understand. Whenever we met with anybody in Ukraine, they, it wasn't them giving us the message. It was Rudy telling them what he wanted. Mm -hmm. He was dictating the message. He was telling them what he wanted for them to get and bring to him. It wasn't like they were bringing it, and then they would go and bring it. So just think about the way that transpired, you know. And then back then, I didn't realize it. I didn't 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 notice it that much, you know. But now looking back at it, I mean, Rudy was basically telling the Russians, "Hey, just like when Trump went on TV and said, hey, Russia, if you're listening, find me the 30,000 30, yeah, emails. emails. Right. Same exact thing. Same exact thing. Yeah. And Babalewski, I think he's just, listen, he's from what I know about him, and I'm finding out a lot more because uh, we might have to do another show because uh, I have some very interesting information I'm finding out. But from what I'm finding out is that he's obviously hardcore mega. He has business with some very big oligarchs in Russia. He has uh, so he's a, some very interesting characters involved in his life. And uh, the way it looks like is he came in, 
just because they had nobody else. Because he really doesn't have anything. He doesn't know Joe Biden. He doesn't know really Hunter. I mean, he was introduced and the way from from just listening to his own testimony, and he, it looks like he was more upset that he didn't make a couple hundred thousand dollars on a deal that went bad than it had anything to do with anybody. And, you know, he even his, in some of the statements himself was saying, I wasn't privy to that. I was a, but the crazy part is the Republicans kept asking him his opinion, not fact. They would ask him his opinion. So what do you think, Mr. Like he was so credible, you know, like especially, you know, uh, a specialist on anything to do with Hunter and Joe Biden. Like it was just comic. Well, we he get the a, same shit like, when, on, on our news outlets, right? When all of a sudden they yeah. have somebody in. Oh, you know, and, you know, what's your opinion on, you know, on X, Y, and Z? And they don't know shit. And it's just like Bo Belinsky. They have no idea what they're talking about. Or Smirnov. They have no idea. They're making up stories about the president. They make up stories about you. They make up stories about me all the goddamn time. And it's really, it's very frustrating to me. Frustrating, you know, I, I say this on TV all the time. I did not ask Alvin Bragg and his right. office in to do it. Hey, do me a favor, right? Bring me in. Uh, I want to be a witness. And, you know, they that now they want to call me a star witness. And the only reason that they do that is so that they can turn around and they could shit on me and my credibility and so on. Oh, my God, you lied to Congress before. Yeah, I did. About the number of times that I spoke to Trump about a failed fucking Trump Tower Moscow real estate project. Right? Who did I lie for? I lied for the benefit of Donald Trump. I mean that's the funniest. That's the funniest that's, thing. So and I stayed and my on lie, his my message. Lie, my lie was the money. Yeah, my lie was the money that I donated to Donald Trump. <laughs> Same thing. That was that's what I lied about on my FEC. The way I donated the money. <laughs> right. I mean, I, I I lied saying about you know hush money payments and so on. That's you know uh, why? But, but Michael, what benefit why, was why, me? Why? I certainly didn't sleep with Stormy. I didn't sleep with right. Aaron McDougal. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole thing is so fucking stupid. Can I also ask you, because you, there was one moment I'm sitting and I'm watching you. Obviously, I was watching it because it's you, right? But also because I'm super interested in terms of something that you dropped. And I think it was the breakout moment for the entire, um, for the entire hearing. You called out several members of Trump's inner circle. While you were sitting there, first, I, I was like, oh, my God. You called out Pete Sessions, who was in attendance at the hearing. And the way you did it was so fucking cool. Uh, let me tell you, it really was. <laughs> Including one guy who's just sitting right here in the in the chambers right now, Pete Sessions. But you also mentioned Devin Nunes, who is somehow involved with this untruth social platform, which is a fucking scam. And you also called out Ron Johnson, who I think may be the dumbest asshole well, and that's hard to imagine. Could you imagine me saying Ron Johnson is the dumbest asshole when you have people like Marjorie <laughs> Toilet Green and Lauren Handjob Hobart? I mean, or I Josh Hawley or Mac <laughs> Could you imagine this shit? Tell me. Do me a favor. Enlighten my listeners. What was their part in the scheme? Well, before I start enlightening, I'm just going to say, has anyone responded to me? Zero, Zilcho, Bubkis, nothing. Because they know that if they put a highlight and respond, more truth will come out. So they use a tactic by not responding. Just think about the bombshells, the accusations, looking Pete Sessions, congressman, across from me. He's sitting there and supposed to interrogate me and zero. He didn't even ask me a question. Instead, he actually thanked me for being there. He said, thank you, Mr. Parnas, for coming. <laughs> I mean, it, you can't make this shit up. Uh, so I'm sorry, Michael, I just lost my thought. What were you asking? So I was asking you, what was their part in the scheme? Oh, their part. Okay. Yeah. So basically their part was uh, different people had different parts. So Pete Sessions was basically pushing the agenda that Maria Ivanovich was no good and she needed to get rid of her and trying to become relevant any way he could into Trump's world because he didn't have a relationship with Trump and wanted to get closer. Devin Nunez basically was Trump's guy. Remember the midnight White House run going back there? Devin Nunez was always, uh, and he had his two guys, uh, Derek Harvey and Cash Patel, who were his aides. They were basically also like, do what you say. So they were investigating uh, all of this Russiagate stuff and investigating, trying to prove that Ukraine had the servers, 
that stole the DNC servers, and that Ukraine also uh, in interfered in our elections instead of Russia. So that was Devin Nunez doing that. Then you had uh, Ron Johnson, who at the time actually wrote a letter saying we should get rid of Victor, <laughs> Victor Shokin out of there. He was one of the congressmen that wrote a letter saying that he's a corrupt uh, prosecutor. That's how crazy it is, uh, you know. So, the, uh, so they all had different roles. Eventually, I became a point person to all of them. And uh, with Devin Nunez's investigation, I started leading. I started setting up phone calls with them, uh, uh, Skype calls, to the extent of one time Devin Nunez was supposed to travel to Ukraine to investigate, I mean, meet some of the prosecutors. And he said to me, that's when the famous 10-minute phone call where he said, supposedly spoke to my wife. Well, what we said on that phone call was we were discussing for him to go to the interview. When he turned around to me and said, we're going to have to keep this hush hush undercover because the Democrats control the house and I would have to tell them where I'm traveling and, and they would know everything that's going on. So let's keep this instead, have those Skype uh, video Zoom calls. This way they won't know what we're up to. So even going back there, it was all cover up Skype. So eventually, you know, once you, we got the information, the problem was that we couldn't push it because a majority of the media, even including Fox themselves at the time, disregarded this as bullshit, false information. It was never backed up by any major FBI, CIA, any other, you know, other countries, you know, intelligence services. It was just hearsay and, and basically emails and text messages, all kinds of stuff. So nobody would touch it. So that's when the push became, and that's when they decided that Ron Johnson was going to be our guy in the Senate to start pushing it uh, hardcore, to start getting so this way the media had no choice but to come onto it. So it was basically like a business plan. That's the crazy part. It wasn't like here we're going. It was a business plan of how to take dirt that was concocted and to push it through the halls of Congress, halls of media, and to be able just for the sole purpose of Donald Trump. And that's the crazy part. It's exactly like what I was using the um, National Enquirer for, right? To promote exactly. lot, to just promote these exactly. lies again and again and again. You know, it's funny because exactly. I lost my train of thought right before even asking you the question when I was bringing up <laughs> the whole part where you know these attacks, you know, they're designed. They're they're just all designed, and it's exactly. it's yeah. really it's a shame that this is where we're at and what's going on. Yeah, it. It's it's really a sad, sad day for America yeah. when you get called. Like, I don't want to be a witness. I don't. I did not yeah. call People up Alvin Bragg. Me. No, I didn't call Alvin <laughs> Bragg and say, hey, Al, how are you doing? You know, I'd like to be a witness in this trial <laughs> and so on. Right. First of all, yeah. it's enormously yeah. expensive. It's time consuming. It, right. People it don't sucks. understand that. It <laughs> it sucks the life out of you, you know, when you have this shit. Then you got to sit there and you're going to have to now deal with the likes of Blanche and Necklace sitting there attacking you very much like the way they were attacking you at the yeah. at the House Oversight or that they attacked me. Remember, this is is this your first or your second appearance before a committee? First time. First, first time. time. Okay, I did seven of them. All right, just to yeah, give you an idea. Do you know I was supposed to – I was being asked if I would – agreed to come on that same day uh, and testify uh, during yeah, the impeachment. Yes, but it would have been it would have been dangerous to the Manhattan DA's case and so on. Yeah. So yeah. everybody respectfully decided not to ask me. But you know, it is it, it is what it is. I do want to ask you this because during your hearing, you called the investigation a kangaroo court. And I totally agree with you. You know, like during my oversight, and I say this to, to my listeners because I want them to understand just how divided our Congress is and why nothing is able to get done for our benefit. For Donald's benefit, yeah. But you yeah. call that. They, they didn't ask me when I was before oversight, the live one, they didn't ask me a single question about Donald. Only <laughs> the Democrats did. That's where, yeah. of course, the next thing. But you called the investigation a kangaroo court. Do you get the feeling that James Comer and Jim Bag Jordan know that there is nothing on the Bidens and they're just keeping the hearings going as a way to smear the president? And I say this because, and I take, if I was wearing a hat, 
I would take my hat off to Jared Moskowitz. I take my hat off to Jamie Raskin and to yep. Congressman yep. Steve Cohen. These guys, they went right at Comer. But right. in all fairness, Moskowitz, I thought, was hysterical. He goes, I'll tell you what, genius. I will. Moskowitz <laughs> turns around and says to my listeners that maybe didn't see it, he says to him, I will call for the impeachment of President Biden. But Chairman Comer, I want you to second it. Let's stop the games and let's move this investigation forward because we're already like 15 months into it and there's nothing going on, right? So he goes, I call for the in, for the impeachment um, of Joe Biden. Congressman, will you do it? And Jim Big Jordan is sitting there and he's giggling as if there's anything funny about yeah, bringing mean, an crazy. impeachment action against a sitting president of the United States based upon, as Lev, you describe it, bullshit. Not even bullshit, but Russian disinformation, actual Russian disinformation meant to disrupt our country. And that's the crazy part, Michael. It's one thing if they were just pu pushing some bullshit about Biden having a secret wife or a secret love child. I mean, that shit happens all the time. But this is they're taking actual Russian disinformation that's been proven by our own intelligence community. Donald Trump, Steve Mnuchin's uh, Treasury Department sanctioned these people that they're dear Koch and Rudy as people that came and dis uh, sent Russian disinformation. And till this day, they're still using it. How can you? I don't know how. I mean, th that's the sick part. Till this day, knowingly, they're doing it. And that's why I pray that when we do it, uh, when the Republicans lose the House and the Democrats take over, they all need to be held accountable. That's the only way we'll be able to move on. Because if they get away with what they did, we're going to have fucking impeachments every year. It's going to become a political sham, and you're going to be, it's going to be, our country's going to go to shit. I mean, just think about it. Prior to Donald Trump, we had three impeachments in the history of the United States. Since Donald Trump, we had another three impeachment, two for Donald and one they're going after his opponent. Are you kidding me? I mean, you can't make this shit up. I mean, no. it's, it, it is really sad and scary that they're doing it, and there has to be accountability for this. Yeah, but look, because it's, it's, you, it's, you have the accountability for what we did. They need the accountability for what they did. I that's totally, what that's the country. I totally Absolutely. agree. Which, and by the way, you brought it up. You brought it up earlier in this program when the Southern District of New York made the statement themselves that unindicted co-conspirator number one, right, was involved in the scheme, right? Well, I certainly didn't do it for myself, right? And so how is it possible that? They then later on didn't bring charges and they just let the whole thing disappear. Okay. Okay. I can understand. Yeah. I can understand. They'll say, well, you can't indict a sitting president. And I get that. Nor was Bill Barr going to allow it. Right. I personally, I personally pray that the House turns. Oh, yeah. And Whoever it is that's going to be running oversight, whether it will be a Jamie Raskin, whether it will be, you know, any of the Democrats, that the first thing they do is they hold the hearing, they summon Bill Barr, you know, to the table and, and, and hold him accountable for all of the things that he did. It's no different than the stupidity that's going on now with NBC Bringing yep. on Ronna I mean, Romney McDaniel Ron as a commentator. I know, I know Ronna very well. Oh, you and me both. I'd love, to, I'd love to come out. To, I mean, the way she, you know, she was Trump's lackey. For her to come out and say the shit she's saying and the, what she was doing, it's too, that's crazy. And she's not the only one. You have Stephanie Grisham who does the same shit. These people stayed there to the very end. Ronna, longer than anybody. Right, Longer. Rana was is only out because they need because Laura there. Out. Of course, she got kicked you out kicked because out. <laughs> they needed Laura there in order to, you know, use all the money to benefit Donald. Yep. And Rana probably was going to say, "Hey, you know, that's not really how the system works. Donald's not interested in the system. He's interested in the money in order so right. that he doesn't have to pay for his own legal fees." It's so funny yeah, that this is about yeah. legal fees. My entire case, my entire 
argument and fights with Trump initially started over legal because fees. Legal fees. Right? Yeah. yeah, it's up because he's such a cheap, mm. you know, this guy is <laughs> he's so, absolutely. Just think about it. all if he would have just think about how how his I mean, if he was even a just think of how stupid he is, even if he was a smart criminal. Pays your legal fees, takes care of you, maybe keeps you quiet. Takes me out of prison, costs him nothing, takes me home, <laughs> has bar drop the charges, maybe I keep quiet. I mean, you he, he, but instead he's so narcissistic, like he's so obnoxious, like he just doesn't care about anybody. It's like as soon as you something happens to you, even though you, it's on behalf of him, it's like it's your problem. You know, I, I don't got know a, you. I got a question for you. You just brought that up about you know if he would have pardoned you. you Not pardoned. I've asked you. I've asked, asked, right. I'm just saying. But I've I, and I asked you this in the one of the previous um, podcasts of mine that you were on. Mm -hmm. Rudy was came to you at one point in time to see if maybe you knew anybody that was looking for a pardon that you should send those people his way and there's a lot of articles that have come out about people paying for pardons and so on you would think that at least they would have turned around and said well lev pay for a pardon i mean they were asking you to find people to pay for pardons right i mean you would think that he would have done the same you know for you right no it would see with me it happened too late because when they already came when rudy sent his minions to give me the messages that trump was going to take care of me because igor decided to support her <laughs> and that's why he never got pardoned i mean it was so for me at that point it was about pardons the only chance they had to be able to keep me is while i was still under that mega cult influence and that was that first cup week in prison in jail be, until I realized what, until I came out and started realizing what the hell was going on. But if they would have just came in, like uh, Rudy or whatever, and came out and got me out, and they, uh, I mean, they could have got me out the day I was arrested. The following day, paid the bail, you know, got what was it, was a million, a couple of million dollars to this group to no, bail nothing, me out to get me. Nothing. They I, exactly, go and they, they, they go and they'll fundraise it. Exactly. Bail him out, take him in, and keep brainwashing me to keep me doing it. Have you ever wished that you had a whiter and a brighter smile? Well, before you visit a dentist, you should know that their whitening treatments can be very expensive. And it's not just the price. You also have to book the appointment and schedule time away from work or family to sit in a dentist's office chair while undergoing the procedure. I mean, let's be honest, it's a hassle. Fortunately, now you can try Smile Actives at home or anywhere, anytime. Smile Actives offers a safe and an affordable alternative to those expensive whitening processes. Like most people, I'm a big coffee drinker. I drink a ton of coffee. And over time, I've noticed that my teeth have lost some of their brightness that I was originally used to seeing. 97% of Smile Active users in a clinical trial reported up to six shades whiter on average, all within 30 days. I'm using it. Look, I mean, simply add Smile Active Pro Whitening Gel to your regular toothpaste. It's been formulated with PolyClean technology to boost stain removal and deliver active whitening ingredients into your teeth's grooves and crannies so that you get better whitening. Smile Actives makes a teeth whitening gel that can simply be added to your toothpaste every time that you brush your teeth. So no change in your routine, no extra time, and no more messy strips, trays, or lights. People will start commenting on your whiter, your brighter smile in just days. Smile Actives is the whitening boost your favorite toothpaste needs to give you the smile that you deserve. So I want you all right now to visit smileactives.com forward slash Cohen today to receive a special buy one, get one free offer with auto delivery plus free shipping and handling. That's smileactives.com slash Cohen. Terms and conditions apply. So see the site for details. I'm just saying to you, even to that extent, this is how stupid they are that they demand. They don't even, they don't even take care of it. They demand loyalty. They demand all of this thing and they don't give it back. And that's what people don't understand.
Tell me one person that Trump's been loyal to, Michael. You know better than anybody, Trump. You, one would you have name thought, one, one would have thought it would have been me after all the right. years. I until mean, right? so, that <laughs> all the time. If he could do that to me, imagine what he will do to you. And so because exactly. he doesn't, he doesn't exactly. have loyalty to anyone. You know, but I, one of the things that actually I marveled at during your uh, House oversight hearing was the issue of how involved Trump was in the scheme to find dirt on the Bidens. Yep. What about his kids? Were they involved? Was Don and Eric involved? Was Ivanka and Jared involved? Did they all have direct knowledge of the scheme? Did any of them have any knowledge of the scheme that was going on? The only one that was, and you know, Trump is a micromanager. He likes to be in charge of everything, especially that. Uh, Don Jr. was involved. Uh, Ivanka and Jared kept tried to keep a distance from him at all times. But did they know Even about it? I never spoke to them, so I can't say. I would it would be dumbfounded to believe that not they didn't know about it because it was such a conversation everywhere in Trump mega world. I mean, from the hotel to the events to the rallies. I mean, everywhere we went, that was the topic of the current. So I would, but I didn't hear them personally. I never had a conversation with Ivanka or Jared. Uh, and Eric, I, I mean, uh, Eric is somebody I don't even know if I would have a conversation with. I don't even know if you like could hold a to conversation. A wall. It's like talking <laughs> exactly. to a brick wall. Yeah. <laughs> He's so stupid, it's scary. But, you know, but like, did Rudy ever turn around and say to you something like, yeah, you know, I just got off the phone with Jared. And I, and I bring up Jared for several different reasons because Jared – figured out through, of course, the help of Ivanka early, early on how to become secretary of everything, including with the oh, pardons, absolutely. including with the pardons. The guy takes over the pardon office like a week or so before the, you know, Donald has to exit the White House. He did this all the time. He was the secretary of everything. This issue was extremely important for Donald finding the dirt on Joe Biden, on Hunter Biden, and trying to create that false narrative, right? I I have a hard time believing that Jared did not have knowledge of this scheme. You know, uh, I wouldn't say he didn't, uh, but I think even this scheme was so crazy that I think even Jared <laughs> didn't want to jo- I mean, only just think about it. everybody when again, I mean, everybody pushed against it, saying that this is bullshit, this is Russian propaganda, this is rumors, this is not true. I mean, not one reliable source. The only people that followed the, the, the lead were Donald Trump, Rudy Giuliani, myself, and the BLT team with John Solomon, and then faith, those faithful four or five congressmen, senators, and that was it. Now it's spread. Now you have your Marjorie Greens. Now you have your, but back then you didn't even have all of them. They weren't even in the picture. So it was that small group, but the, it was us against the whole world, against the whole media. Even Fox wasn't on board. This all happened after the impeachment hit that they all started making that push to clear his name and to turn it all around. Prior to the impeachment, nobody would even touch the story. Nobody would, that's, that's why we needed Ron Johnson to push in the halls of Congress. That's why, you know, we would, uh, Pete Sessions had me delivered a letter to Trump to bypass Pompeo because Pompeo wouldn't hand that letter to Trump. Pompeo would kill it and dead it before it got there. Bolton wouldn't want Rudy talking to Trump about Ukraine. Bolton, do you understand what I'm saying? It was just everybody was trying to cut us off, but Trump needed us because we were the only ones doing what he wanted and getting it done. Tell me something. Everybody what was else your, wouldn't. And what was your conversations with Don Jr. over? Can you give us can you give us a little of the uh, sum and substance I mean, there? <laughs> I mean, Don Jr. is, uh, I, I've never had a, a, a normal conversation about anything that made sense. I mean, he's usually always looks like he's, you know, definitely in very giddy mood. For me, there may be a few drinks or whatever else he does, but, you know, that's to, to each his own. But he's always, you know, nobody ever took him seriously, Michael. Around our group at that time, Don Jr. was like, you know, until we needed him, like, for instance, when we needed him uh, to tweet something or, uh, we needed him to, you know, he was going to see Trump uh, at the White House and pass a message, you know, like Tommy Hicks or Rudy Giuliani would tell him, like, because they weren't going there. Because he was he he was like like the 
Trump uh, intermediary between the super PAC because it's, you're not supposed to have coordination. Right. But boy, did they, boy, did they have coordination. Oh, did they ever? <laughs> boy, did, boy, did they ever? I, I mean, the, it was so coordinated, everything, you know, and you had Don You Jr. may as well had Donald you know, sitting in the campaign, in the office exactly. of the- I mean, he was. I mean, he was. I mean, I, mean, he, I mean, literally he was because before they made any decision, they would go, you know, either Junior or Tommy Hicks or somebody would go to the White House and get their orders from Donald on how to proceed. Yeah. So can we go back for a second? When you started going all over the globe looking for dirt on the Bidens, who did you actually talk to? And what exactly were you looking for? So, uh, I mean, I've spoken to uh, three former prosecutors. I mean, I could name names, but I'll confuse the hell out of the public. That's one of the problems because there's so many different individuals, characters. When you start going into detail, explaining, people lose the main subject. So I'll just name it as there was three, four prosecutors, past prosecutors. There was a current general prosecutor. There was an ex-president, a current president of the, you know, uh, of the Ukraine. Uh, there were... Um, NABU, which is a group that was set up by Ukraine as an anti-corruption bureau by the head of the anti-corruption bureau of Ukraine. We spoke to a lot of shady characters, oligarchs and people that were in the underworld that, you know, promised to deliver us from tapes. So, and this is the interesting part. The things that the carrot that we were always chasing were the same things that eventually the Republicans started leaking and they started getting debunked. Now, like for instance, the tapes, remember the 17 tapes yep. that they were, that they had all these tapes. We were, well, we were looking for this. That's how I knew it wasn't true because I never got the tapes. I realized the tapes were not real. So when they all of a sudden, Brooke Homer brings up and says, we're going to bring the tapes. That's why I right away tweeted and said, you don't have the tapes. I know you don't have the tapes. This is another Rudy Giuliani, you know, conspiracy theory. And uh, so it was basically that, I mean, all over the world, because and all these oligarchs and uh, these powerful people, you know, had contacts all over the world. So, you know, we ended up flying to Spain, to London, to Vienna. I mean, you name it for different meetings because they wouldn't want to be seen, for instance, in Ukraine. So we'd set up a meeting in Paris uh, or, you know, stuff like that. So it was like a lot of, as crazy as it sounds, I mean, it was a lot of like James Bond type of shit. I mean, it's, <laughs> I sit back, I still don't believe I went through that or, you know, it was so, so surreal. I mean, I just, you know, to think about having the meetings with the type of people and the type of places and having the discussions and all the discussions. I mean, it was on such high levels to basically take down Joe Biden. Yeah. And you never and you, found, and, 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 and you, you never found yourself. anything, right? You never found anything on the Bidens. The only facts we found, which I told the committee, is yes, uh, Hunter Biden worked for Burisma. Yes, Hunter Biden got paid X amount of dollars. I've seen the wire transfers from both banks to his bank. To, I mean, we, I've dig, dug into it, but we've never found any money going to Joe Biden's account. We've never found any money going out of Joe. So that's what I'm saying to you. There was never any link. And, I mean, at the end of the day, the bottom line is the prosecutor general, this is what you got to understand. This is the key fact that will sew it all up, that all is bullshit. Victor Shokin, the guy that supposedly was fired for uh, to do the investigation, himself said that Joe Biden, Hunter Biden did nothing wrong in Ukraine. President Poroshenko, who was president at the time mm -hmm. and fired Victor Shokin, he came out on statement and said, Joe Biden never pressured me and did anything wrong. Mikola Zlachevsky, the CEO of Burisma, as corrupt as he has, even when Rudy Giuliani offered him a get out of jail free card, Michael gave us nothing. Unbelievable. Because there's nothing. So, so think about. It. So these are the key people. This is the same. The prosecutor got fired. The president that was there, and the CEO that supposedly paid the bribe, and they're telling you nothing. But we, but what the Republicans and James Comer and they want you to do is say, don't believe them. Believe all of these Russian right. assets that uh, that because they know the truth. Yeah. I mean, I went through the same bullshit when it came to the Trump P tapes, right, where I kept yeah. saying it doesn't <laughs> exist. It doesn't, it doesn't exist. exist. <laughs> and I and they were like, well, how do you know that it doesn't exist? Well, I know that it doesn't exist because right. I had my feelers out there in order to try right. to find it. I know and I was, I was and with them. I know exactly. Well, I wasn't with them because I was actually not, not there. I mean. yeah. <laughs> not right. Really. So let me ask you this then. Um, did Rudy <laughs> and Trump or anyone else that you may know in that orbit paid to have stories created by Russian operatives? Or were these stories just volunteered because that's what Putin wanted? Yeah. 
they didn't have to pay for it because it was all they were on the same program. See what? So a lot of people also don't realize, and this is important for the public to know, Michael, is this story about Joe Biden and uh, uh, corrupted was came out in like 2014, 2015, before even though that it was used as Russian propaganda back then. They were using it and pushing it in Ukraine to mess up Ukraine's in relationship with America, even before Trump was even going mm -hmm. into prison. And then it got debunked. It got thrown out. They proved that it was nothing, and it died. Until Trump came back into office, until Giuliani met with Victor Shokin and had us get him and say that we lived that story. And once he opened it back up, an old uh, conspiracy theory, that's when they all came out of the uh, the woodworks and started pushing through every corner. And I, we haven't seen the rest of it. I promise you, Michael, we got six months before the elections. We're still going to see a lot of Russian interference because for Vladimir Putin, this is do or die. Yeah. I mean, because he, because if uh, Trump loses, he loses because Ukraine will succeed and destroy Russia. So he needs Trump more than anything because he understands, like Viktor Orban said, Trump's not going to uh, give Ukraine any more funding. <laughs> I mean, I'm laughing, but it's just so crazy that we're talking about these things and they're so true. And people still believe that somehow he could come into office and make a difference. So now that, that he Manafort, could somehow come in. Uh huh. So now yeah, that Manafort, let me uh -huh. ask you. So now that Manafort is, you know, is back, back so, somehow <laughs> into the campaign, which I just find absolutely <laughs> head scratching. Same. Would you say that Trump either has worked or is now currently working directly with the Russians to sow more misinformation, disinformation, malinformation. Because I will tell you that anybody who is on uh, X, formerly Twitter, you see right now the rise of bots like I've never yep. seen before in my entire yep. life. I mean, the, every other per they are zero followers or a hundred followers they just started in 2024 they all say the same thing they all claim to be veterans they are not they're all second amendment yeah. they're all family people what veteran in their right mind would actually say the hateful things against anybody who is anti-trump when trump wouldn't go lay a wreath at arlington because it was oh, yeah. raining out and he didn't want to get his hair wet He's a guy who turns around and says, you know, those that got killed in action, that, you know, that they're suckers or they're losers. Uh, right. This is a guy or, or who wants to execute. Right. Or who, this is a guy who wants to execute Joint Chief of Staff General Mark Milley, a man who has dedicated his entire life to protecting America and democracy. I mean, I don't understand. You know how this shit is going on. I don't understand why Elon Musk is willing to allow this entire platform right. to become a fucking right. joke. But do you think that they're currently working with the Russians? Well, I mean, look at me. It's plain. If <laughs> they're still pushing the same Russian information, you still have people like uh, I got a new troll, Simone Papadopoulos, Papadopoulos's wife, that is completely taking interviews from Dear Koch while Dear Koch is on the run and pushing and spreading this information on Twitter. So you still have Trump's inner circle pushing the information. But not only that, you have now. Paul Manafort coming into the mix and people who don't know who Paul Manafort is, that's a direct link to the Kremlin. I mean, he worked for Deribaska. I mean, right. Putin's, I mean, he got paid tens of millions. I mean, this is, I mean, a clinic, like, let's relive, I mean, who this person is. I mean, just because he spent a year in prison doesn't mean that those relationships are dead or all of oh, a sudden far they're from not, it. Not, you know, so, you know, and, and why would Trump bring him back? Just think about it. Why would Trump bring Manafort back? Only for one reason, because of his relationships to Vladimir Putin and the Kremlin. And he's he's basically trying to get to 2016 all over again. Yeah, agreed. So, look, the hour goes by really quick here on yeah. Mea Culpa. I have um, just one last question for you. You've written a couple of books about your experiences with Trump. Your book, Shadow Diplomacy, came out in February. And in the book, you delve into... Who is really pulling the levers of power? Of all of your discoveries working in that world, what shocked you the most? What shocked me the most is that how growing up, I always believed that America was pure, clean. I mean, that we, we were the exemplary power to the rest of the world to look up to. 
And I looked at the Oval, the Oval Office, the President, Sikh, our congressmen, our senators with a very high uh, level of respect. And after spending four years in Trump world and seeing how crooked, how dirty, how underhanded, how corrupt they go, I realized it makes us no different than Russia. And just we could cover up better. And that was that's the scariest part and the most craziest part that I've seen that how that not just Trump, but how deep the corrupt goes and how they could stand on TV, look the American public mm -hmm. in the eye, not even blink and just lie and tell such crazy stuff that will that basically hurts our public. And that is what really astounded me. I never could believe that this in America. I mean, I believed it in Russia, Eastern Europe. I've lived it. I've seen it. So it's a, it's a different way of life there. You know, corruption is different than we, the way we grew up with corruption, bribery. We're taught that that's number one. And the way now I realize it is in our United States. And that's why I wrote the book, Michael, because unfortunately, like you said, an hour goes by quick and you know it better than anybody. We do these interviews, but we could, it's difficult to get the truth out. Yeah. And that's why you wrote the book. That's why I wrote the book because like this, the public could get the whole truth and understand what happened. You know, it's funny that you say that because I feel the same way. My father, you know, who's an immigrant, uh, you know, came from Poland after the war. Yeah. He always said to me, you know, um, America's the greatest land and so on. And now we really turn around. We have a little bit of a difference saying that, you know, we're a country of laws without justice. I don't want to be a part of this. I really I don't. As much as people think, oh, you know, uh, that the, the, you're, you're getting your, your 10 minutes of fame. This isn't 10 minutes of fame. This is six years of fucking it. torture. You know, like me, I don't want to, I don't like what I'm seeing in America anymore. I don't want to be involved. I would leave the country tomorrow and not come back. I never thought in my entire life that I would ever say anything like that. And I know it disappoints my father and my mom when I say stuff like that. I would leave tomorrow and not come back. Fuck it. I'll go find and make myself a life somewhere else. I don't care if I don't care. It's like I'm fighting a system that is absolutely, as you said, it's corrupt. It's disingenuous. It's filled with a bunch of people who only give a shit about filling their coffers. And I'm talking about these members of Congress that yep. won't ask yep. you a single pertinent question in order to get to the truth. And so you fight day in and day out, day in and day out. I'm so tired of fighting. You know, it's, yep. a, it's like why I said to the Manhattan DA, if you don't subpoena me, I'm not showing up. I don't want to show up anyway. I want to leave the country. And I want to go enjoy my life, whatever I have left. Yeah, and people don't understand that. They think fame, this ain't fame. They don't understand the misery your kids, misery. your wife, you went through and going through and still have to. And and people don't understand that. And but a lot do, you know. I you know, I, I see a lot of people that show the love and support you and me and and these people really understand. That's why that makes it keeps us going like basically michael because without their support without we wouldn't be able to do it but you know what that's not going to stop us i know you very well michael and you know me we're just getting started well, next six months we're, we have a lot dude, i'm really i'm really gonna... tired but <laughs> lev always great to see you my brother thank you so yeah, much for joining you. me again thank you for your bravery and um yeah i i don't know i don't know if i got it in me but i know you <laughs> i know you do so i will see you <laughs> I will see you very soon again because yes. there's a lot more shit that I know is going to ultimately come out on Donald, Rudy, Bill Barr, you know, and yep. Comer Pyle and Sessions and the whole group of these of these maniacs. So thank you. And I will see you very, very soon. Thank you, Michael. Thank you so much.